My dear people of God, allow me to start our reflection this morning using the second reading, that letter to the Hebrews. And I wish to make the first part of that reading to be our jumping board in order to kind of grasp profoundly the beauty of the readings vis-a-vis -vis the celebration that we have today. And in that first part of the second reading, we are given that idea in times past, God communicated with His people through the prophets, spoken word, written word. And in now, now, in the recent times, God has communicated with us through His Son in person. Allow me to bring you back to those times when messages were sent by telegram. Perhaps through the train station, perhaps through an office that was receiving and then at the other side, it was printing. And then, from the sheet of paper that came out from the printing machine, it will be folded, it will be delivered to you. Imagine that. Somebody is biking, giving you your message, your telegram. Somebody is driving, riding the motorcycle, giving you your message. What if that messenger is really the owner of the message. Imagine that this paper is useless because I am the message. The messenger is the message. Let's use another example. If you are typing on your keyboard, you're looking at your monitor, your screen, and then from the other side, your wife is reading your message. Dear Cory, Merry Christmas, I love you. Love, Booboy. What if Booboy will come out of the screen? Imagine that. Would you remember an advertisement of Sony Trinitron in the year 1984 when there was a series of chicks newly hatched coming out from the picture tube of the TV? That was, I guess, the first color TV from Sony Trinitron. Imagine if those letters running, flowing in your screen would become a real person. My dear wife, I love you. And then comes out the husband from the screen. That is precisely what the letter to the Hebrews in that first part talks about. The message becoming the messenger. The spoken words centuries ago, the written words centuries ago, given to the people of God, is no longer a word. It's a person. Jesus, my Savior. Jesus, your Savior. That is the beauty of the second reading. Having said that, allow me now to bring you back to the first reading. Because in that first reading, we are told how beautiful are the feet of those who carry the good news, those who carry glad tidings. And I would say, those who carry the gospel. Perhaps you, parents, perhaps catechists, perhaps the priest, perhaps those who have maternal or paternal care over minors, those who have moral ascendancy over kids. How happy are the feet, how beautiful are the feet of those who carry the good news. I had the beautiful experience 20 years ago, 1997, I was working in Camrose, Alberta, in the big archdiocese of Edmonton. And I guess Edmonton is famous for the biggest mall in the world. It's empty because it sits in a wide land. And you will, when you get there, be sure you, knew, you know where, where you entered because if you are wrong in going out, that's one and a half kilometers that you have to go back to. It's huge, huge, huge. And in that parish in Camrose, there were closed parishes. Why closed? They were merged and then there was no priest coming in. Because these were the places given as homestead to Ukrainian and Polish farmers. I was sent there in 1996. And then in 1997, I served in a place that was so near to a Mennonite colony. 
not Hathorites, not Quakers, Mennonite. There was this teacher who belonged to the Catholic Church, a CWL member, Catholic Women's League, who was the teacher of all grades. One long hall, one building, they had the principle of BYOP, build your own person. First grade, second grade, third grade, fourth grade. Only in one classroom, but long. The only Catholic person in that colony because she was sent by the government to be a teacher. One day, this little boy in his overalls, kids, girls don't go to school. They just get married. Mennonite kids have a separation. Boys go to school, learn ABC, and then carpentry, and then that's all. Girls, they just wait to be married. They are being matched from one colony to another. Okay. Here is this boy who disobeyed the rules of the colony, went out of the colony, bought a Christmas card and a little gift to the teacher. My parishioner, a CWL, CWL member, and with the card and the gift, he gave a gift to the teacher. And the teacher said, how did you get this? Did you go out? And the answer was, walking is part of the gift. December 27 of that year, 1997, we had a Christmas party for the CWL and the Knights of Columbus. And this teacher shared with us her experience. Father, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring glad tidings. Father, I just taught them how to read. But in so doing, I had also to mention the Bible. And the chief of the colony was not... Uh, Repugnant. He, he was in, in, the, in, in accord with me because he is also the pastor of the colony. The president, the presider, is also the priest of the colony, and he's the head of the colony. He speaks Yiddish, he speaks German, and he speaks Swiss and Flemish. Yeah. So here is the woman, a senior member, saying, Father, I have experienced the beauty of what it is to be a carrier of the good news. I said, let's do the reverse. That kid also brought the good news. Imagine if you were told part of the gift is the walking. That area, I tell you, is not far, but with the snow this high, one meter high, you could build a divider of the road. One meter wide, one meter high. That is the snow. That is the ice in that area. And yet that kid went out of the colony just to buy Happy are the feet of those who carry glad tidings. Happy are your feet. Happy are the feet of the priests. Happy are the feet of the catechists. But we should interiorize first before we share this. Before we could, we, we could make people realize that we are happy bringing the glad tidings. Pray for one another. Pray for us so that our joy will truly be a profound joy. Let me go to the beautiful gospel. The prologue of John. This introduction. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. This is not play of words. Every statement here is full of wisdom because God, the eternal God, with Him and in Him was the Word. You see, Jesus, before was, he was born, was already part of the Blessed Trinity. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. Blessed Trinity. And the Word was God. So, if we make a simple syllogism, the logic will be, if Jesus is the Word made flesh, and the Word is God, then Jesus is God. Claro. Yes. So, this is the way we appreciate today's readings. And this is the way we appreciate who we are vis-a-vis -vis a God who became like us. You should be important in the heart of God. You should be precious in the, uh, in the eyes of God because He became like you. Partaking of your human nature so that slowly you would shed off all inclinations to evil and slowly go to that place where He wants it to be heaven. Suffice it to say that today is your birthday towards a better life. 
talking about a better life. Would you remember a movie by Jack Nicholson? I forgot the title, but I'm telling you this. In that movie, Jack Nicholson is bipolar. He has a girlfriend, a waitress in the restaurant, who bugs him and bugs him, take your meds, take your meds. And here's Jack Nicholson saying, you know what? You annoy me, but you want me to become a better man. What movie was that? As good as it gets? I think so. If you have watched the movie, watch it again. Those who have not watched it yet, watch it. God wants you to become a better person, a better daughter of His, a better son of His. Amen. Merry Christmas.